Welcome back to The Card Pool. I'm your host, Stu. And I'm Kyle. And today we are finishing up the hidden gems that we found in the dark. Yes, the dark. Just in time for the Halloween or fall season. You know, getting into winter, days are getting shorter. Yeah. Seems like a good time for we this. We gotta move the clock back and forward and forwards and backwards and it just makes people miserable and happy at the same mm, time. Yeah, you know. But something that'll make you happy will be my number five. All right, well, let's get right to it. Go so ahead. So my number five is if you are a blue player, I don't know why you would not run it. It's a card called Flood. Now, this is a one-drop enchantment. Actually, that works really well with that water flowing <laughs> yeah, in. Does. That's great. It is a one-drop enchantment for just an island. And for two blue mana, you can go ahead and target non-flying creature becomes tapped. Now, this is a very simple, very off the beaten path of a blue enchantment that I've ever seen or played against. It makes it so that as long as you have this two blue mana open, you can pretty much tap anything down yeah. at instant speed. Now, typically a blue player, we know the infamous, I have two islands. Are you sure you right. want to cast something that might target <laughs> me? Even if it's a bluff, we're all used to the whole counter spell mind game. This is something else that makes it so it's even another level on top of that. You can play mind games on mind games on mind games, and you can still protect yourself, which is really, really good. It's always interesting to see blue enchantments that are powerful, because blue generally isn't like the enchantment color. No. But there are some really good ones, like oh, yeah. Propaganda, and like Pendril Mist. Frozen and, Aether, and, and, I Yeah, love. so many of them. So this is another one. This is like... I don't know that it's like you know, really like ten out of ten amazing, but it's still pretty good. You but know, the like, usability and versatility on the again, you play it turn one, you just use it whenever you want. And again, if you're a control player, yeah. you're using stuff at instant speed, you're always holding man up, you can keep yourself awesome. Of course, it's of, if you're playing against a lot of flying, this isn't going to be very useful. But if you're playing against someone who doesn't have a lot of flying creatures, this can just make people's lives totally miserable. But to be honest, you're in blue. Right, your you kind of want to do have, that anyway. Yeah, you're going to have creatures <laughs> that are flying anyway, so you'll be fine on that front, typically. Right. Typically. So, yeah, so this is very, very interesting. Seems like a really good control piece, potentially. And, well, yeah, put it with uh, Willbreaker. Yeah. Uh, this gets very dumb true. very quick Very right true. There. Another so, good card to use with that. Yeah, I, I, nice. I'm only finding more cards to work with Willbreaker. Yeah. And that's not a good thing, <laughs> in all honesty. But moving on to year number five. Kyle. All right, well, I'm going to keep it right in the enchantments here, but go to green this time. My number five here is Hidden Path. We just went on opposite. I'm I'm green, you're blue. I know, right? Yeah, yeah we're kind of, it's opposite day or something. <laughs> so with this one, it is a six drop enchantment in green, two and a hefty for green, but good payoff here. Green creatures have Forest Walk. Very simple ability, also a very powerful one. Because as we discussed in the last video, Land Walk in general is not something you see a lot of anymore. No. And the few instances that there are of it are usually pretty good because giving unblockable to almost any deck or any certain type of creatures is usually very strong, you know, making them basically, like I said, unable to be blocked. Land walk, giving, giving you know, all green creatures the ability to basically be unblockable under the right conditions is very powerful considering green is the premier creature color and has the biggest, scariest creatures. So there's two issues with this. This means that one, your opponent has to be playing green and that they also happen to have a basic forest out. So I looked into this because I never saw this card before. I didn't know anything about it. I was mm -hmm. like, well, in mono green, how many options do you have for that? And there's, and there's actually four. There's two of them that are really good. Um, one of them is like this aura that goes on an opponent's land and makes it so it's a forest in right. addition to its stuff. Or all, there are ones that make it all land types. That, that would work Well, there too. are some other stuff like that, uh, but there is one where it's actually it's a, a monk that sacks creatures and it turns a land into a basic forest. Like it hoses. In the actual yeah. land, which is kind of interesting. So you hmm. can always be able to enable it via that way, which is pretty wild. But yeah, yeah, you have to be playing against a green opponent for this to work initially. Otherwise, it doesn't do much. Yeah, this is kind of a meta call or a sideboard card. I don't know that you'd really want to stick this in any old main deck. But it can, as well, be a nice politics tool at the table. Because yeah. you're giving all creatures the ability to have forest walk, which really opens up another dimension of potential gameplay and other things for your opponents to consider. But again, they, that means also you're running forest, which is kind of the downside. Because then their creatures attack you for no, unblocked. Maybe, but if you're playing outside of green with things like you know maybe white or blue, 
you can stop people from attacking you. Sure, yeah, yeah. Encourage I, them to go after or, other people. Yeah, what is it? They can only attack the player to their left. Right, or their right it could or always like happen. That. You could use stuff so, like that. Yeah, but yeah, it, it is a unique card. I do like it. And again, if you go ahead and you use Pain or Servant, you go ahead and make it so all your stuff is green. If it is off color, for example, yeah. you can swing in with a whole army. You don't have to worry about their little guys in front of them. When any card gives potentially like blanket unblockable to your creatures, I think it's worth considering, which is why this is on here. See, actually, I've always been debating. Land walk of any type or horsemanship. I don't know which one I would rather have typically. I don't know how you feel. I honestly, probably horsemanship or shadow, which is basically the same thing, is probably better because you're not depending on other people to play certain things. And odds are they're not playing any of that card. Like there, there are barely any shadow or horsemanship cards that people That's are going to be thinking. playing. So I think those are better. You know what? But land walk is still pretty good. We'll do a little poll in the bottom. Yeah, got to go in the comments. Yeah, for tell this. us down in the comments below. What do you think is the best evasive way to hit damage? Now, this can't include flying, and this can't include unblockable. Yeah, obviously. obviously. So don't put that down there. And if you do, we'll just be like, really? <laughs> that guy. Well, let's go on. Let's see All right, so my number four is a card called Baral's Cage. Hmm. Now, this is a four-drop artifact, and for three mana, you can go ahead and tap target creature, and it doesn't untap door, and it's controller's main untap step, or their next untap step. So this is really interesting because you typically see this effect in blue and white. So being able to go ahead and have this as an artifact that any other color can use is pretty powerful. Sometimes targeting matters. So like Hirobi Death's Whale, that's all about targeting right yeah. there. Something like Derevi, that's something, or Derevi. Derevi, yeah, Derevi. I always get those confused. Derevi cares a lot about targeting. Willbreaker is another card that cares about targeting. So this is something that is useful without needing a lot of other stuff with it, but the more stuff you put with it, it's not bad. I suppose, but I honestly like Flood a lot more than I like this. Sure, every deck can use this because it's a colorless artifact, but I've just never been a huge fan of the, like, I, I call it the Frostbite ability because it's like, you know, tap something down and it doesn't untap yeah, during the next untap much step. The giant. This doesn't even tap the things down. Like, they have to already be tapped or get tapped for this ability to matter. I just, I just don't know how great that is. Well, usually if there's a creature that's going ahead and using some sort of annoying tap ability, we'll use like a Royal Assassin for like a blanket example, right? Powerful card. You want to just kind of deal with that? Yeah, I'd rather pay three man every time and just have that taken care of and I'm fine. Some creature attacks and you don't want them attacking again? Kali of the Vest or something like that. Holds it down. It's fine. It, it's a political card that you can use on anyone for whatever reason. You can make deals with this. Be like, I can handle this. You guys can't attack me. I don't have enough mana to do anything else. So this is something that you can go ahead and, again, buy time. It's, it's it, The value on this yeah. card isn't just face value, which is, again, something to note. Maybe so. I think there are a lot more simple solutions to the problems that this is supposed to solve. But it isn't, I guess, an interesting potential option. We'll see. We'll see. Also, again, people do animate land, sometimes hosing them down for a good bit of time. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. Well, it's interesting. So move on to your number four, Kyle. Is it All right. more interesting? I than think, mine? well, I think it's more interesting. It's definitely a little simpler, but I think powerful. Number four on my list is Fissure. We're going to red now for a five drop red instant. Three colorless, two red. Target land or creature is destroyed. Very, very simple, and yet I think very powerful. Like, the reason being, targeted land removal in red or mass land removal, yeah, we all know that's a thing. It's not fun, but it's a thing, and sometimes it is necessary to deal with the really dumb lands well, that maybe exist not in this mass, game. But definitely targeted. The targeted, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. However, targeted creature destruction in red is a lot harder to find. And I'm not talking about damage. Like, yes, damage cards can get rid of creatures. Like lightning Bolt, but, sure. Yeah, but most of them, unless they're an X spell, once you get above a certain threshold, they stop being very effective. And really, in a game like Commander, when you really want the most versatile cards possible, are you really gonna are you really gonna pay for a car that's like, oh, deal six damage to only creatures? And it's like, no, no, I, I'm not gonna play. Yeah, that. I have a problem with this land or this artifact yeah. or this. Like you want, yeah. Well, Moldal's better in general. This is a Moldal card hundred percent. I will argue that one of the hidden gems I said in Tempest is a little better than this one, Aftershock. Oh yeah, no, I'm not debating that that's probably better. Most of them because it just costs less. It is a sorcery, but it costs less, so I would probably go for that. This, however, is yet another option that I didn't know existed for targeted removal in red, 
And even though it does cost a little more mana, it is an instant too, which makes it maybe worth of consideration. And if you're interested in what we're actually debating right here, we'll put a little blip up here so you guys can go back to that video and have an idea of what that card actually is. And you can check out the hidden gems we're talking about from that set. But I think the one that I've said was a little bit better than Prob the one that you, you said. But however, being from this set only, this isn't too bad. Like being yeah. able to kill a creature in red like that really doesn't is happen. Rare. It's very it really much bending the color pie these days. And the fact that we can look back on some of the old cards that can do that and maybe expand the range of what our decks can do is still very cool. So I hope you know that this card exists now because I certainly did not. Yeah. I didn't, but. Yeah. We'll move on to my number three, actually. Right. So at my number three, this is going to be a card that we're going to pull up the Oracle for, so yeah. bear with me. I'll read it to you while the other image is up. It is called Scarwood Bandits. Now, this is a four-drop creature, two generic and two forest for a 2-2 body with a, of a human rogue. It has forest walk, which we've already gone into for a little bit, but for three mana, two generic, and a forest, you can tap this. Unless your opponent pays to generic, gain control of target artifact as long as you control this creature on the battlefield. So this right here is a green, pretty much steel artifact card. Now, yeah. sure, your opponent can go ahead and use mana to hinder that. However, they're going to be obligated to keep that mana open. And it's kind of a permanent steal, again, until you lose this. It's almost like a banishing light kind of thing. I'll get the advantage until this guy's off the field. It's just so unusual to see this in green. Like, Yeah, this is a very blue ability, stealing artifacts like that. This feels like a Master Thief or, or something in green, which green is typically the color that wants to just destroy artifacts. doesn't yeah. really care about having yeah, it them. Yeah, it doesn't play nice with all that machinery. Yeah. <laughs> and, and actually, almost any, like, what is, what's the, uh, it's not Teamer, it's the America colors, red, white, and blue. Oh, Jeskai. Jeskai. Yeah. Jeskai is all about, like, trading permanents around, taking yeah. your permanents. You see it in Esper, too. Like, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Everything but green, really. And yeah. this is, Very like, interesting. one of the few <laughs> things. It's a budget option, which blows my mind. It works in human tribal works. It's a rogue. It works with the party mechanics. Yeah, it does. Like, it, it's, which still Still blows my mind right there <laughs> and it can like it's forest walk it can be maybe unblockable can take artifacts semi permanently i'm not really sure if this is something green wants or needs but hey it's nice I'll, to have i, I like i like to steal other people's soul rings all the time oh yeah so let's let's go or not I, even I'm that <laughs> someone plays neveneral's disc right it comes into play tapped all right they can't use the turn enters just mm -hmm. take it from them Get, make it so it's your problem on other people instead of the other way around. Yeah, there's a whole lot of problems that this potentially can help with. It's really not too bad. And again, you're obligating them to save their mana. As long as you have three mana open in green, how hard is it to have mana? Like, this is great. Mm. This is really great. Really thinking outside the box. So, yeah, again, nice to have these potential tools at our disposal. Oh, totally. That's what these old sets are great for, I to think. Totally. Stuff just under the radar. Yeah. Uh, so moving on to your number three, what do you got? All right, well, this is a little bit more mainstream, I think, but still, really cool card. Number three on my list is going to be Eater of the Dead. Now, this... This is going to be an oracle. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> just a little. So this is going to be a five drop, four colorless, one black, uh, for a horror creature. It is not an eater, as the card suggests. That's, that'd be are. one heck of a creature yeah. type right there. <laughs> I'd be so, that. Yeah, so anyway, the card text says you can tap for, for zero mana, so you can really do it at any time. If Eater of the Dead is tapped, exile target creature card from a graveyard and untap Eater of the Dead. All right, I smell like a combo. Uh, exactly. So why is this card really good? At first glance, it seems pretty mediocre, right? I mean, it's just a, it's a like sort of terrible body wise. It's a weird creature. vigilance. Exactly. Yeah, and like it is grave hate, but it's not really reliable grave hate. Well, is it your grave or any grave? Oh, it's any grave. Okay, that's not horrible. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's interesting. But the reason why this is good is because this combos very, very well with some cards in particular, like, uh, so you, you, for example, just any card that taps down creatures like a, a Cryptolith, right? I suppose this works well with. Sure. I suppose this works well with Opposition, where you can tap something to tap something of somebody else's. Sure. But the best one is in a mill deck, one of those Demir Commander mill decks with something, a commander like Phoenix God of Deception, where you mill people based on how big the creature's toughness is. So mill them is. for three. 
on yeah, tap is that for yeah exactly that's why this card is good this really this that one specific situation is why a lot of people wanted this card and its price spiked a few years ago it's now back in a very reasonable range but that is yeah. really good for mill yeah because it's, it's it, not yes, isn't it it is it is it is an infinite combo it oh is. well it can be as long as somebody's packing enough creatures absolutely it is yeah yeah. yeah, as long as you don't whiff with the three, it, it just has to be a creature right. and a thing. And if and you if, hit three creatures in one blow, you at least have three future right. times. And to if do it that. doesn't, and if it doesn't work, you may have some creatures in your graveyard to use to fuel it. And yeah, this is it. Yeah, like I so said, so Sir Conrad would love this. Yes, it does oh. because that also removes cards from graveyards to fuel possible mill. Does damage for it every gross. time. Gross, gross. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this. Like you could use it on yourself. You can use it on your opponents. Right. Exactly. So. Uh. It's it's great grave hate and also incidental combo. Very, very interesting card. I can see why under the radar. they didn't make eaters a try because that just sounds <laughs> <laughs> yeah just way sounds too weird. powerful. Yeah, it's power in the gut right there. Yeah. Eaters, but yeah, eaters I mean, unite. Take note of that card. Very, very <laughs> interesting. Uh, moving to my number two. This <laughs> is right. another interesting card that I just love. I've been trying to use it forever, hadn't been able to put it in a deck. At my number two, it's called Witch Hunter. Now, this four drop creature is too generic and double white with a one one body. It says Hunter is the type, I'm pretty sure it's just a human. It's a human cleric now, actually. Hey, it's a party card. It Woo! is a party card. Um, so you can go ahead, you can tap this creature and it deals one damage to target player. So it right to the face, it's it's a pinger. It's like Tim. And it hits planeswalkers. And, which is pretty good. Yeah. But the second ability is something that's pretty unusual for white. For three mana, one generic and double white, you can tap this guy and return target creature and opponent controls to their hand. And it says any auras that were on them would be then destroyed, which is now just basic information that we know. Yeah. We... This is a blue card. This is Tim with like an extra kind of like the jellyfish that enters that bounces something back in. This is a blue card and a red card together on a white card. What the heck is going yeah, on? Yeah, this with is this? a weird love child right there. <laughs> it, yeah, it doesn't make any sense for that. However, I will take that advantage for white right there because yeah. that is a super powerful card. Again, it just needs the turn to go ahead and tap, but it has a free tap if you don't want to return anything or if you don't have the mana for it. Or you go ahead and get rid of, you bounce a creature, buy commander, buy a problem creature, buy combo piece. It's just so good. It's versatile in what it does. It can come out early. Like, sure, four mana for a 1-1 one, one doesn't sound good, but those effects, I'd say, are worth it. Well, absolutely, this is one of those cards that fascinates me. I have no idea where this belongs, <laughs> but I really want to use it now. Well, like, just view send triplets for right now, right? Play stuff from people's hands, I'll bounce something and do it. That yeah. right there is a little combo. That's not even probably the best you can use this card for. If you can have, well, if you can have somehow, like, infinite untaps, which is actually easy enough, even in mono-white, if you use plenty of artifacts, you could potentially kill people with yeah, this. Yeah, just take down the it's board. It's so weird, like... <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, the way this card works, like, I, I made a Wano White deck. I was like, this card's awesome. Like, I don't even know what to say about this. Like, it's just so weird and, and cool and outside the box. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know where this belongs, but please tell me. Because I want to figure it out. And I this is this. a complete budget option, and I don't know why players aren't using this. Like, it almost feels like White Staple. I, I mean, sure, yeah, it maybe. is four mana. It's a little high. This was a... A two drop, a three drop, it'd be a way yeah. better card at that point. But yeah, I just, I love it. I, I do too, it. honestly. Great pick. Very, very cool. Thank you, Cal. <laughs> so moving right. on to your number two, what do you got for All us? All right, well, this is a card I am also very passionate about. Number two on my list is Dance of Many. Now, this is another one of those cool blue enchantments that I was talking We're about. We're going to need the Oracle for this bad boy. Yeah, too. well, it's double, it costs double blue to cast. So for this one, it's kind of a clone on an enchantment body, which is really kind of interesting. When it enters the battlefield, you create a token that's a copy of target non-token creature. When Dance of the Many leaves the battlefield, you exile the token. When the token leaves the battlefield, Dance of Many gets sacrificed. At the beginning of your upkeep, you have to also have to sacrifice Dance of Many unless you pay two blue for basically what is a cumulative upkeep cost almost. But it's not cumulative upkeep. Right, it doesn't grow, but it is sort of a constant upkeep cost. <laughs> that is a paragraph. Yeah, so <laughs> well, 
think about this. So we have Phantasmal Image, which is a two mana clone creature. Sure. This is essentially the same thing because you're getting a copy of anything. You just have to pay a little upkeep cost for it. That's the only difference. It's it, on it, it par. It has to be a creature, though, right? It does have. Well, Phantasmal Image has to be a creature. Okay, I'm just, I'm just saying. You said yeah. anything. So yeah. So I mean, it's really interesting in that this is an old card that is still on par with Phantasmal Image. Honestly, a really great card. Yeah, it doesn't have the downside of Phantasmal Image with the targeting. However, it has a different downside. It has a different yeah of paying two mana, which again you can choose when you don't want to do that. But it doesn't grow. The fact that it's an enchantment's almost better because enchantments yeah, again be. like are uh, tutorable, whereas mm -hmm. like blue has a hard time tutoring creatures, but it could potentially yeah. pair with white and go ahead and get mm -hmm. uh, an enchantment and stuff like that. Zer the Enchanter could use this actually as a thing to go ahead and pop out. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm using Zer the Enchanter because again, it's a CDH card. A lot more people know it. It's just a great little combo piece. But you could put this in anything like. It's a clone. It's an enchantment yeah, clone. It's, exactly. it's really good. And, and clones... for very little mana, too. To copy any creature on the board, that's potentially extremely powerful. Yeah, including your own. So you could combo this out with dumb stuff. He's recently done this. He's done this with his Sakashimi. Yeah, Sakashima uh, the Imposter. This is one of my favorite cards in the deck because I also have plenty of enchantment copiers. Weirdly, Blue has a lot of copy enchantment cards, including the literal copy enchantment. We'll throw There's the, like uh, three or four of them at this point. The deck link down below. Yeah. And I, if we can do a thing up top, I'll throw it up top. But... Check out Kyle's deck. It's literally clones the wazoo, but it actually <laughs> has a consistent flow, and I'm impressed with I, it. I love this card because it not only does it give you a token for your clones to potentially copy, but like I said, it's an enchantment that can be itself copied, and really a very undercosted one at that. So yeah, very nice. Decent for clones. I will still say, Clever Impersonator is the clone for clones. I mean, you could debate that. Spark Double might be better. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's very Clever much Clever Impersonator can be Spark Double hmm. targets. Yeah, whatever. Moving on to my number one. This is a card that I have recently just stumbled upon and that I really enjoy. It's called War Barge. It costs four mana for an artifact, for generic that is. And for three generic, target creature loses Island Walk until the end of the turn. And if this artifact leaves play this turn, target creature is destroyed, a.k.a. buried, a.k.a. put in a hole and it's not coming back. <laughs> so, what's so fab about this? Like, Island Walk, sure, but like we said, not a lot of creatures have land walk abilities, and unless you're giving it to them, so what? The main thing about this is you can actually use this as forms of spot removal. Because <laughs> all you have to do is target a creature, they don't have to have that land walk. It just makes sure that they lose that ability if it is there. So yeah. you do that, you target as many creatures as you want, and you kill this artifact. You can sacrifice it with like a Brea effect or something like an Ironworks, Carclan mm -hmm. Ironworks. Bam, I hate this creature, I hate this creature, I hate this creature, <laughs> I hate all of Kyle's creatures. Use all that mana, Carclan Ironworks, I'll get two mana back, I'll destroy this, all your creatures are gone. Yeah, potentially. I feel like, again, this is like one of those that seems today like a lot of hoops to jump through for the kind of ability that we want, but it is very interesting. It's unique. Yeah. 100% unique. unique. And it just seems so off the grid for me for something like that. Like we said with red, not having a lot of ways to go ahead and just kill a creature. Right. You could use something like this. Again, it's it, it hates blue. This is a blue effect. Do it with something like that. Red has tons of ways to kill artifacts and enchantments. It does. Green is the same way. You can do this to go ahead and just be able to hose down creatures. Yeah. Interesting in a deck like a Duretti deck, for example, where you can, you know, sacrifice artifacts for value, bring oh, yeah. them back. You could potentially, you know, if you have enough mana, you could board wipe somebody with this. Yeah. And use it multiple times. Duretti is a great example. I didn't think of Duretti, but yeah, being able to just recur this out and just go ahead for three mana, do something like this, or sacrifice yeah. it after you've done that, get something else out. The the value with that is is vast. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Thank you. I thought you would hate this. No, I, I don't I don't hate it totally. I probably wouldn't play it. Your but voice I don't hate got it. really high, so <laughs> I, I'm not going to take that in as a win. Right. Well, I don't hate but, it. I wouldn't play it, but I don't hate but it. But also, you got to love the flavor on this. This is the captain bringing down the ship with <laughs> it. It's, you don't get much of that. That's just great. But moving to your number one, Kyle, what do you got, Flo? All right. Well, my number one was going to be familiar to absolutely everybody, but I had to mention it. Tormod's Crypt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is oh, a yeah. Yeah, zero-drop artifact. 
which has a very simple ability again. You just tap it and you sacrifice Tormod's Crypt to exile all cards in target player's graveyard. Yeah, this was like one of the old school classics for grave hate until eventually we got more. Yeah, I mean, we just, now we have things like, you know, Bajuka Bog, which doesn't even require you wasting a main deck slot to play the card. Sure. But come on, you don't really even have to do that for this one either. It's zero mana. So, and it's an artifact, which is good on so many levels, I won't even just go into it's it. It's good on paper. This is a, this is a multi-format all-star card, maybe slightly outclassed by lands like Bajuka Bog, but I or feel scavenger like- scavenger grounds. Yeah, but I feel like this should be at least be a consideration in almost any deck if you're looking for a source of grave hate, which pretty much any deck should have at this point. Yeah. Really, there are so many graveyard-based strategies out there that if you don't have a way to hose them, you're just asking to lose. So this is really good for the fact that it's a zero drop, and you'll see people use it for that reason alone. So, like, you go ahead, we have historic decks. We have decks that care about artifacts. So when you mm -hmm. cast an artifact or a historic card, you go ahead, you bring this out. Or also, you draw a card or something like yeah, that. You, yeah. yeah, you do that. Also, we have little combos, like with a blasting station. It's tutorable mm -hmm. via Trinket Mage and a variety of other things because it's an artifact. So it works with little tiny niche spots, which is really cool. It has value that can kind of cycle in that you want to see with certain things. And, I mean, there's the White Angel that cares about low-costed artifacts. Mm. I don't remember her name, but it's pretty much like this is something that's in there. Now, this is great on its own, but when you start applying more value to it, which is not too hard, oh yeah, this this card shines. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't really have a whole lot to add other than this is one that I feel like everybody knows, and for good reason. It's pretty infamous. There's really very few ways to actually get around this card exiling your graveyard. Yeah. It's going to be very difficult. You might be able to save a couple cards if you have something like the Scarab God that you're trying to yeah. go ahead, I need a couple targets, a couple targets quick. Like, that's about it, but it makes them respond. People who love the grave hate this card, and it's been reprinted a small handful of times, too. Yes, and as an artifact, it is super ripe for abuse of all kinds, so... How do you ripen an artifact? I don't know. Do you just have to let it rust for a little bit? I don't uh, know. That sounds like refurbishing. Mm. But either way, that is going to wrap up our moment here that we are looking at the hidden gems. Our following episode will be the top 10 money cards that we were not allowed to discuss for our lists. Yes, indeed. And until then, you can find us all over social media on Reddit, for example, on Tapped Out, where we keep all of our deck lists, on Facebook and on Twitter for our profiles. And you can find them all at the handle The Card Pool. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but until then... I am Stu. And I'm Kyle. And, and we will see you next, next time at the card pool. Wow, some of this stuff is so cool, isn't it? It pretty, yeah, yeah. I thought you would <laughs> hate the barge. Nah, I, I'm kind of all right with it. Liar. <laughs>